I'm Adrian the Cruise and Travel Guy. Join me on board the Pacific Adventure for a full and comprehensive ship tour. Let's begin the tour in the Pacific Adventure's stunning central atrium. Though it's only three levels, this space is beautifully designed and forms a perfect central hub. It's where the entertainment staff will host themed parties and events throughout the cruise. On Deck 7, you'll find jewellery shops, including Pandora. Across to the other side is the Ocean Bar, the perfect spot for an evening pre-dinner cocktail and just maybe a little people watching. The box office is located at the entrance to the casino. It's where you can purchase tickets to P&O specialty shows. These performances are generally held in the Black Circus Theatre, which we'll see a little later in the tour. Pacific Adventure differs from the Pacific Encounter in a couple of key areas, and the first is the location of the casino. Instead of Deck 6, Adventure's Casino is located on Deck 7. It's definitely a popular venue, and there's a variety of table games and poker machines. There's also a full service bar. The casino is generally open from late morning when the ship is at sea. Continuing forward, you'll reach the upper level of the main show lounge, the Marquee Theatre. This multi-level space is where you'll watch P&O's main production shows, as well as comedians and passenger talent shows. These are included in your cruise fare. Through the theatre, we can head down to Deck 6, where you'll find the stage and additional seating. Exiting the theatre and heading in the direction of the central atrium, you'll cross paths with p and staple, The Bonded Store. Serving premium handcrafted cocktails with a Prohibition era twist, the dark and moody hole in the wall style bar is an easily overlooked space. In another unique difference from Encounter, on the starboard side of Deck 6 you'll find 7 additional suites without balconies. These window suites sleep up to 5 passengers, but despite being suites, do not provide access to the Byron Beach Club. On Encounter, you'll find Luke's Bar & Grill located on Deck 7, but here on Adventure, you'll find the upscale restaurant on Deck 6. This specialty dining venue is born of P&O's long-term partnership with celebrity chef Luke Mangan. Open primarily for dinner, Luke's is regularly open for lunch on sea days. Dishes include steak, truffle fries, crab omelette and signature dessert, licorice parfait.
Back through to the central atrium on deck 6, you'll find the guest reception desk. Next to the reception desk, you'll find HQ and HQ Plus, P&O's youth and teen centres aimed at older children. We'll take a quick look in HQ Plus. P&O offers three distinctly themed, complimentary main dining rooms. And up first is Angelo's. Angelo's is open for dinner daily, but also offers an exclusive private breakfast for guests staying in one of the ship's suites. The menu features Italian specialties like antipasto, pasta and risotto, as well as a wide range of delicious desserts. Back in the atrium, we'll pass another of the ship's onboard shops before making our way down to Deck 5, the lowest level of what P&O calls the lobby. This spectacular space is a great blend of both modern and traditional elements. It is elegant with cosy seating nooks perfect for enjoying a catch up with friends new and old. Across the atrium there's a secondary lounge area which is perfect if the lobby is particularly busy. The essential store is where you'll find, well, your essentials. Across on the other side is Charlie's Bar, another of P&O's staple venues. It offers its own intimate seating area and bar. Next door, the new Avalon Cafe offers barista-made coffee, as well as a variety of teas and delicious food items, though I was too early on this day. All of the food and drink items at the Avalon Cafe are an additional charge. Lily's takes over from what used to be the Vines Wine Bar on Golden Princess, but in keeping with the original intention, the venue is focused on wine and cheese boards. It's another beautifully designed and unique space with comfortable furnishings. Deck 5 is also where you'll find the main complimentary restaurant, The Waterfront. Open for breakfast and dinner daily, plus lunch on sea days, the restaurant offers a wide variety of tasty, casual food.
There has been a clear focus on crafting options that have a distinctly modern Australian flavour, with influences from all corners of the globe, though some dishes are more successful than others. Back up to deck 7, we'll walk past the ocean bar and head towards the back of the ship. I should note that there is a full wraparound promenade deck just outside. The stunning Adventure Hotel is Pino's take on the quintessential Aussie pub. Well, perhaps a more modern and city inspired version. The interior design is a highlight, with plenty of space to mingle and sit. Live music, plus hosted events like trivia and karaoke, are held here throughout the cruise. In addition to classic cocktails, the smart looking bar offers a range of draft beers and cider. Further aft, you'll find the Blue Room. Dark and intimate, this warm space is dripping in velvety blue tones with striking artwork lining the walls. A full service bar, plus a roster of entertainers and musicians performing here throughout the cruise make this one of the highlight entertainment venues on board. Next door, you'll find another specialty dining venue. Four Hundred Grady is another land-based restaurant turned nautical, and will probably be familiar to anyone hailing from Melbourne. The restaurant is open for lunch and dinner, and offers an a la carte menu focusing on, obviously, Italian food. With entrees like arancini, meatballs and bruschetta, plus a wide variety of pizzas and pastas, this is definitely the place to go for your carbohydrate fix. And I might add, there's even a Nutella calzone on offer. Outside, the photo gallery is where you can purchase internet and photo packages, Plus, you can browse through and purchase the many pictures that the ship's roaming photographers capture throughout the cruise. The Black Circus has become an entertainment highlight on board P&O Australia ships. The line's famous adults-only shows are held here throughout the cruise. There's also a roster of comedians and other entertainers that perform here. The adults only shows like the Purple Rabbit and Blanc de Blanc Uncorked need to be booked at the box office once on board and cost around $20 per person.
From the aft stairwell, you can make your way down to deck six to access another of P&O's complimentary dining venues, Dragon Lady. With dark timbers and pops of red, there's an undeniable luster in this venue. The menu is best described as a fusion of Asian flavors, with dishes inspired by Chinese, Thai, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese and Indian flavors. Dragon Lady is separated from the central atrium, so you can only access it via the aft elevators or stairs. Now we'll head right up to the adults only oasis, but we'll access it using a little known route via deck 12 aft. Offering its own pool as well as a bar and ample deck space, this adults only retreat is split across several of Pacific Adventure's terraced aft decks. The Altitude Nightclub, which we'll see at the end of this tour, towers high above on deck 18. On either side of the Oasis Bar, you'll find the entrance to the pantry, Pino's take on the buffet. This side of the overflow pantry seating is converted to a specialty restaurant by evening, called Shell and Bones. At the entrance, hand wash basins and sanitizer are available at all times. The pantry is set up like a food court, with multiple storefronts serving different types of cuisine during lunch and dinner service. Crew members will serve you from behind the counters. The food though is all included in your fare and there is no limit to the number of times you can return. During breakfast time, each stall offers all of the classic brekkie staples that you've come to expect, such as eggs, bacon and all the sides. A separate bar offers alcoholic beverages and soft drinks, while a selection of complimentary juices is available every morning, plus tea bags, machine coffee and ice water are available at all times. This is also where you'll find the dessert bar and bakery. These self-serve stations offer cereals, yogurt, pre-made sandwiches, soup, salad and fruit depending on the time of day. Walking towards midship, we'll pass the lower level of the indoor family pool. We'll see this in more detail a little later on in the tour. The main pool differs a little to that on Encounter. This wall structure encloses the pool bar area. This is also where you'll find two of Pacific Adventure's casual poolside eateries. Luke's Burger Bar offers an array of delicious burgers, hot dogs and sides, with most items coming in at under $10. Past the pool bar, you'll find Grady Pronto the takeaway version of 400 Grady. It offers tasty pizzas costing around $7.50. Both venues are open from late morning until late at night. Looking aft, the big screen shows everything from movies, concerts, sports and football games throughout the cruise. It's absolutely dwarfed though by the new twin racing water slides.
New Zealand Ice Cream is another specialty venue, offering an array of delicious ice cream, shakes and barista-made coffee. These are all available for purchase throughout your cruise. Back indoors, you'll find P&O's designated family pool zone, offering an expansive pool with ample lounging space. It's a retreat from the weather. A retractable roof keeps the fresh air flowing on sunny days. On the lower level, you'll also find the Magradome Bar, named after the sliding roof above. The upper level offers family-focused fun with ping-pong and other deck games. Plus, you'll find the entrance to the edge facilities on the deck above, including access to the slides, though it was locked when I walked through here. Outside, you'll see the exit to the twin racing water slides located conveniently close by the indoor family pool zone. Behind this staircase is another point of difference to the encounter. Instead of the encounter's youth and teen centres, Adventure offers an additional 10 full suites, plus two Ocean View cabins. Walking aft, we'll come to the Sunset Bar. With two hot tubs, plus deck games, this is another great place to hang out on a sea day. I really appreciate that it's very easy to find your own slice of outdoor space on Pacific Adventure. From here, you get a fantastic view down over the adults only oasis and the ship's wake. On deck 17, you'll find the sports court. Forward and past the midship pool is where you'll find the Sky Bar. The Sky Bar is open daily for all of your poolside cocktail needs and who doesn't need a poolside cocktail? We'll transition into the forward elevators where you'll find p youth centre, the Shark Shack. On the other side of the elevator lobby is the entrance to the Elemis at Sea Spa. Walking through the main foyer, we'll pass the Byron Beach Club pool. Further forward is the entrance to the well-equipped gym. The fitness centre is complimentary and offers a range of free weights, weight machines and cardio equipment. Plus there are group fitness classes available throughout the cruise.
The spa offers a range of personal services for purchase throughout your cruise, including hair care and barber services, massage therapies and more. Transitioning back to the sky bar and heading up the stairs, you'll find a viewing platform. You can see straight over to the main pool and the twin racing water slides. While there is no charge to use the slides, p has also installed its highly regarded edge attractions. On adventure, these include the flying fox, rock climbing, walk the plank, archery, Highline and more. Each of these attractions can be purchased individually or guests can purchase an edge pass for the duration of their cruise. This space is an additional sun lounging zone, somewhat protected from the wind. Forward still, we'll find the Byron Beach Club. This exclusive outdoor space is reserved for guests staying in a specially designated Byron Beach mini suite or any of the ship's full suites, excluding the window suites located on deck 6. Guests of the Byron Beach Club also have exclusive access to the pool and hot tubs located on the lower level. The club offers an assortment of luxurious, comfortable furnishings, both in the shade and sun. There is attentive service, plus a unique Byron Beach cocktail menu, and a delivery service from Grady Pronto and Luke's Burger Bar. From here, you can also see the bridge viewing platform, which is a great place to enjoy the ship's departures and port arrivals. Transitioning to the indoors, we'll take a look at altitude. I had an issue with the lighting in my footage, so I've used the footage from my Pacific Encounter tour. The spaces are basically identical across both ships. Accessed via the rearmost stairs and elevators, the aptly named Altitude Nightclub is situated high on deck 18. The unique glass encased walkway with escalator transports you up to the nightclub. With floor to ceiling windows, ample lounge spaces, a full service bar and a dance floor, this is the place on board for a late night of dancing. I hope you enjoyed watching that ship tour. If you are interested in booking a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button.